Today we're looking at the navigate function. You'll use the navigate function to move the user to a different screen within Power Apps. And before we do so, we're going to use a button here as you see on the screen. Now, if you're not familiar with buttons, I just created a button video where I go through all the basics of using a button. So take a look at that if you need to. So this is how simple and easy using the navigate function is. So we're going to click on this navigate a button that I've already added here. All that's been done to this button is I've changed the text property of this button to navigate. Now we want to go to the action menu here in Power Apps and click on on select. And in on select, we're going to type navigate. We're going to end it with parentheses. Now the first parameter is going to be the screen that we want the user to go to. So in this case, I want the user to go to the second screen or screen two. That's the only required parameter. You could be done at this point. Let's test it real quick. I'm going to hold down the alt key on my keyboard and simply click on the navigate button and it's going to take me to the second screen. Now, something you may notice here, I've got labels on each of these screens, screen one and screen two, to actually display the app.activescreen.name. Let me go back to screen one. Screen one also has a similar label that references the same thing, app.activescreen.name. So I just wanted to explain that. So you already know how to use navigate, but let's talk about the optional parameters that you can use with the navigate function, because I want you to fully understand this by the time you're done. The second parameter is the transition. So let's type in a Power Apps keyword called screen transition. Look at that, it's right there. So we click on it. So this is what we would call an enumeration or an enum or an enumerated value. Because when we use this keyword and we use dot, it's gonna give us all the possible values that we can put in this parameter. So we've got cover, cover right, fade, none, uncover, and uncover right. So you can play around with these. My favorite one is fade. So a lot of times I just enter that. Okay, so let's run this project and actually see what this transition does. It's subtle, but that was a fade. <laughs> let's go back to the first screen and let's click on the button again. There is a third parameter we can provide. It is optional, you don't have to provide it. So the third parameter is a context variable or a set of context variables. If you've ever used update context before, this works very similarly. We will use curly braces for this parameter because it could be several sets of named value pairs. Let's say we wanted to pass into the second screen. What screen sent the user there? I've set up a context variable on that screen called referring screen, and you don't have to set that up. Whatever you name it here, I just didn't want to have to come up with the name here on the camera. You can name your variables whatever you want. Typically, I like to start my context variables with an underscore, and I'm gonna call it referring screen. And the referring screen, as I showed you at the top of this screen, in that label where it says screen one, I'm gonna utilize that same concept. I'm gonna say app.activescreen, which is the current screen, dot name. Now we could just pass in a screen of screen one, but what if we rename our screen one? We want it to be dynamic, right? As I told you, we could put in another value. So let's pass in another parameter. We'll start it with an underscore, and we'll say when clicked, and that will tell the second screen when the button was clicked on to go over there. If Power Apps was being slow and we wanted to see how many seconds it took to go from screen one to screen two, we could do a date diff to find out the difference between the two. So let's just use a function with the Power Apps called now that will give us the current date and time and that will be passed in under this variable name when clicked. Now let's go ahead and click on this. I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on it. We go here. Where did you come from? Screen one. When did you start your journey? It's got a date and a time there. You now know everything you need to know about Navigate. Stick around to the next video where we talk about using the back function so we can go back to the previous screen. But before you go, would you like a copy of this Power Apps project? I have the MS app file available to you and I'll link it to you in the video description that you'll find below. Are you feeling overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can condense six months of Power Up struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power Apps Deep Dive Masterclass.